The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be skate. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Two thousand twenty-three, Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network, broadcasting live from Hope Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach, Florida. We are over the next couple of hours. We'll be talking about Bethune Cookman University, the issues that have been taking place on this campus, uh, and hearing from students as well as from alumni. We also will hear from interim president uh, Dr. Drake as well. What is the future? Also, new football coach has one been hired? We'll answer all of those questions. That's coming up next. It is time for us to bring the funk on Roller Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Let's go. He's got it. Whatever the miss, he's on it. Whatever it is, he's got the scoop, the fact, the find. And when it breaks, he's right on time. And it's rolling. Best believe he's knowing. Putting it down from sports to news to politics.
Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, for this uh, two-hour town hall conversation on the present and the future of Bethune-Cookman University. Of course, uh, all this controversy started uh, when uh, former coach, who actually was never really hired as coach, uh, Ed Reed, uh, really uh, sparked a lot of this uh, discussion in terms of the status of the university. Uh, of course, he was not retained or hired by the university to be the head football coach. Uh, students uh, and also f football players were still believing in him, wanting him to be hired. But they said, no, they're moving in a whole new direction. But there's also what we've done over the past uh, couple of weeks really has been talking about what's been happening at this institution, one of the most revered HBCUs. And let me be real clear off the top, because there's a whole bunch of people out here uh, who love running their miles. And y'all know I got no problem jacking people up. So when, when, when people say, oh, you're trying to tear our school down and tear HBCUs down and you didn't go to an HBCU. Well, you don't complain when somebody cut you a check who didn't go to an HBCU. This is about improving and building black institutions. I told you in Dr. King's book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos of Community. He said there are four institutions that are prime position to liberate black America. He said the Negro Church, we're in a Hope Fellowship Church here uh, in uh, Daytona Beach. And remember our first location, uh, Greater Fel uh, they actually canceled our town hall. But y'all know we were not playing around. We found one less than 24 hours later. So we appreciate Bishop allowing us to be here. Give it up. And so there are folks who are saying, oh, you should be talking about this because you didn't go to one. Well, if you don't like it, you should start your own show. But MLK, so there are four institutions, the Negro Church, the Negro Press, Negro Fraternities and Sororities, and Negro Professional and Business Organizations. What he said about the Negro Press, he said, maintain your militancy and not fall for the conservative. And so when you're in black-owned media, our job in black-owned media is not to be always positive. Our job is to be truthful. And so if there are things that are happening, y'all know my motto has always been, if you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. At the end of the day, I'm going to talk about you. And that's exactly what it should be. And so what our responsibility when it comes to our institution is demanding accountability, demanding excellence, and not accepting what is less than. And so when we were sitting here having a conversation with Dr. Drake, when he invited me to come to campus, I readily accepted. And I said to him, let's have a town hall on the campus with students, alumni, the board, bring everybody together. Well, that was later rescinded. No problem. Uh, look, and, and I fully expected that to happen. So we always had a plan B. And so we are here not to sit here and tear down Bethune-Cookman but to actually say, how do we make it better? How do we fulfill uh, the vision of Dr. Mayor McLeod Bethune? How do we sit here and confront the challenges that are facing HBCUs, but also strengthen them? Because the one thing that keeps driving me crazy when we discuss our black institutions, I'm tired of us having what I call survive conversations. We, we, we always talk about surviving. Oh, you know, we, we, we make do with little and it's always survive. No, I want us to be having thriving conversations. I want us fighting for our institutions to look as good or even better than Florida State or the University of Florida. Which means that we have to use our collective power to be able to do so. So the next two hours, we're going to talk with folks who are assembled here. And we'll talk about some of the issues and the challenges, but not just simply focus on the past, but also lay out uh, a path forward. Because you have dissension going on. You have uh, the university suing the Alumni Association. is being disbanded. Uh, you've seen alumni uh, donations go down uh, tremendously. You've seen people who say, I want to help. You're having students who are complaining about conditions in dorms and food and complaining about those things. That shouldn't be what's going on. Students should not have to be protesting on HBCUs for better conditions, they really are here to get an education. And so that's what we want to move forward. It's really focusing on those issues. And so I hope you let everybody know what's going on here. And I'll make this last point. 
And I appreciate mainstream media uh, being here. And I did an interview earlier. But here's the thing that we have to understand. And this is why black-owned media matters. And that is, we ain't here for a 90-second soundbite. This costs us thousands of dollars to be here. Ain't no sponsor paying for us to be here. But the reason we're here, because these are the types of stories that we must be talking about. And all the folks out there who call themselves new, new media or, or black, whatever they want to call themselves, if all you're doing is talking about what somebody else is doing, well, then you ain't legit. What this is about is for us as African-Americans using our collective wealth, our collective knowledge to be able to improve our institutions and make them better, not just for us, but for our children's children because if somebody else 50 60 70 80 100 years ago did not do what they did we could not be even having this conversation today and so with that uh we're gonna go to a break we're gonna again have this conversation uh we're going to start uh with the interview i did with dr drake because I, w I want folks to hear our conversation, to hear what they say is being done to improve, and then we'll be able to use it as a basis for our conversation here at Hope Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach. So again, got to go to a break. Glad to have everyone here. Folks, you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered live in Daytona Beach on the Black Star Network. Don't forget, download the Black Star Network app, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. Support us in our efforts by joining our Green the Funk fan club. Ch check your money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash App, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered, PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered, Venmo is RM Unfiltered, Zell, Roland at RolandSMartin.com, Roland at RolandMartinUnfiltered.com, and of course, and of course, get a copy of my book, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds, available at all bookstores, of course, all, download on Audible as well, and if you're watching, everybody in this room as well, y'all know for the first time we were nominated for an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding News Special. Go to vote.naacpimageawards.net. Go to Outstanding News Category. Select Roland Martin Unfiltered Black Votes Matter 2022 Election Special. Vote for us. You can only use one email to vote. So if you got five emails, use five. For one email, so go to vote.naacpimageawards.net to support us so we can bring home. And look, we're the only black-owned media company nominated for an Image Award. Let's bring it home. I'll be right back. Pull up a chair, take your seat. The Black Tape with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! I'm a real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, a balanced life with Dr. Jackie.
Hi, I'm Israel Houghton. Apparently, the other message I did was not fun enough. So this is fun. You are watching Roland Martin, my man, unfiltered. Welcome back to Roller Martin Unfiltered uh, here at the uh, Daytona Beach Hope Fellowship uh, Church uh, for our Bethune-Cookman Town Hall. So earlier today, uh, I, as soon as I landed, went right to campus and I interviewed doc, the interim president, Dr. Drake, uh, about uh, the issues uh, that we've been talking about on this show for the last uh, 10 days or so. And so here is uh, part one of our conversation that was set up the rest of our discussion here uh, at the church. Well, President Drake, you've had uh, quite uh, an eventful, um, I would say, last seven to ten days. Um, I want to start first off uh, with um, communicating with your students. There was one thing that I've heard from so many students saying, not enough communication, not enough, not enough transparency. Uh, how are you dealing with that so they know what's going on on their campus? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that, you know, I would say the students in some ways are correct. Uh, we need to communicate more. A lot of things going behind the scenes, but what we've done is we've decided to create, and this is with taking the voices of the SGA and student government and other student leaders and saying, okay, let's design a way to ensure that the communication from the administration and anything, quite frankly, is consistent. Last night we held our first session with our freshman class. We're subsequently going to do that with freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. That's part one. Part two is actually to have the subject matter experts for each of our major uh, areas of concern, housing, campus safety, et cetera, so that they get the subject matter experts in front of them and not just hear them, but also create an action item list, which is what we did last night. Um, you, you talk about those areas. Um, one of the areas that, whether it's Bethune Cookman, whether it's any institution I've been dealing with, uh, folks talk about food services. Uh, you've had some students who posted videos, a mole, and things along those lines. Yeah. What have you said to your personnel about what they have to do? Uh, because anytime a video gets posted, a photo gets posted, right. uh, look, that, that can take off, it can go viral. Yep. Uh, and so, uh, what have you communicated to staff? Right, right, yeah. So, you know, the, um, the thing that I'm getting everybody used to is that we live in a digital world now. We don't live in an analog world. That means something can happen in a second, and the next second is viral, potentially. So what I said to staff is simply this. We have a third-party partner, um, and Sodexo is our third-party partner. They actually do our food service and dining, and they also do part uh, of our facilities leadership as well. We said to them, look, you need to be more careful and more diligent about that. And in fact, uh, I was just on the phone this morning. They had a 1030 meeting to discuss not only that issue, but any other issue with respect to what we received from vendors. For example, prepackaged goods of any kind. So bread might come prepackaged. Broccoli might come prepackaged. You need to take the extra step of checking it. If you're getting food or vegetables, they might come pre-washed. Open up the bag and wash them again. If you got bread, look at the rack, make sure the rack matches the date that it's supposed to be eaten by and not have some bread that might have been old, that might have been delivered from the vendor that you didn't check. So what kind of system are you putting in place to ensure that's happening? So if I had, I've had that conversation, and I feel very good about the leadership of that, particularly in the dining hall. Uh, that said, you know, you got to inspect what you expect. So I'm going to be doing a regular check with them once a week and we're going to have a session with their people to ensure that no hiccups. And if there are, I want to know what we're doing about it. Speaking of inspection, uh, housing, same thing. And so um, um, I've had folks sending me uh, photos and videos saying, oh, my goodness, we're seeing cleaning crews. We're seeing folks uh, going building the building. Uh, and so uh, explain what has been happening uh, there in terms of assessing uh, facilities. Yeah. So. We started about seven months ago when I took the job as interim president of assessing our facilities. Of course, what happened in the middle of that was two hurricanes. Um, when Ian happened, we were the first campus to evacuate. Um, some people thought that was foolish, but if you look sort of hindsight, 
it was a great decision. That said, we had to deal with the aftermath of that. Um, about six million dollars worth of damage across the campus, depending upon how you add up the numbers. And so there was a lot of things left in the wake. Uh, and what we've been doing now is the six million. Did you get any federal assistance for that? Not yet, but okay. we've applied to FEMA. Okay. Uh, and and they're walking us through the process. But quite frankly, you know, we have gotten some support from a lot of people who care about the campus and care about the university. So. You know, we've been very blessed about that. But, of course, you know, it takes a lot to do, right? So we we actually started assessing each of, of our facilities in a more comprehensive way. So it's not just what happened post-hurricane, but what were the conditions before the hurricane? What are we doing about it? What can we do now cosmetically? So that's sort of what's the first priorities that we can do. And then what do we need to do longer range? So in that assessment, it's age, building condition, um, not only the age and building condition, but what is the things that might be harmful to our students or might you know, compromise the safety? So we've asked ourselves a number of questions about each facility. So we have a base list now of about 60. We've got over 100 buildings on campus. So now we're really getting aggressive about doing that, and the board has been very supportive uh, about making sure that we begin to prioritize these facilities in a, in a really uh, aggressive way, and I'm very pleased with that. I couldn't I couldn't be more pleased with the, with the support that we're getting. So one of the things that uh, I had some parents reach out to talk about, again, um, locks on dorm room doors, not, not working properly, shower heads, and, uh, and then also dealing with um, rodents or roaches and things along those lines. And so w w have you been also looking, examining your reporting procedures, and not, not just in terms of um, uh, dorm folks, right. but also what are you saying to students uh, about how they use the facilities because that, that obviously impacts uh, things as well. Yeah, listen, you, you, hit a, you hit the big nail on the head that I talked about last night. And in fact, I was so, I was so proud of our freshman uh, class president because she called out her classmates. She said, hey, you told the administration they need to be here to talk to you. Where are you? What are you saying? And what, we, what I said to them was, look, we talk about accountability. As you know, or you may not know, but I want to share it with you, is that our core values are around first. That's faith, that's integrity, that's respect, that's service, and that's thirst for knowledge. So when you are, you know, doing something in your room, whether that's letting people in the dorm who shouldn't be there, whether that's propping open a back door, which keeps your, you know, your roommates and the other people in that building unsafe, or it's, you know, using uh, any kind of substance that is banned from the university because we have a no alcohol, no drug policy, and no tolerance on both of those. If you're doing those things, you compromise our ability to do things to help you. So we try to, we're, we're talking about first, and we're creating sort of this idea of going back to our roots called BCU, we are first. We take those four, you know, those, those key core values, and we build things in there like, for example, respect. Well, I don't want somebody living in a place that's uninhabitable. If we've got mold or mildew or things in it, let us know that, because some of it we can see, some of it we can't. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it is there, then we want to take care of that, because if we say we live to our core values as the administration, we got to hold you accountable to do the same thing. Respect means respect for you your roommate, respect for the other students in your facility. Those are going to be the way in which we also communicate to our student body things like the progress of our work across campus. So we use BCU We Are First as a way to frame how we continuously keep them abreast of what's happening on campus and what progress we're making. So you're meeting, obviously, so you're meeting with, with your students. Um, how are you rep repairing this fractious relationship with your alumni. Mm. Uh, this lawsuit is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you've got alumni that's supportive uh, of the university no matter what, but then you, uh, but you have others who are saying, look, it's way too much friction yeah. uh, and all. And so what is happening there? Because certainly, you know, when you talked about going from 12% to 1% of giving, uh, I mean, that's, that's huge. Yeah, so, you know, I would say, you know, Roland, that's probably, you know, one of the thorniest issues that we um, continue to contend with, which is, you know, how do we bring community together when we have major disagreement about the community? Um, 
a little bit of context around this whole litigation and, and what it means is that you, you know, we had a long-standing uh, National Alumni Association. It had been around a long time. They've evolved over time, and two different models have evolved in terms of how they engage with the university. In the latter years, what's happened is you found that many of the university uh, chapters that were assigned, and as you know, when you have an authorized alumni association, they carry our, our EIN number. Uh -huh. uh, they, are, they carry our nonprofit. They're essentially an arm of the university. And what we discovered is that much of the funds that we believe needed to come directly to the university simply weren't, we weren't able to substantiate. And in addition to that, because the tax receipt for those who gave needs to go to those people, if we can't substantiate where it came from, we can't exactly give a tax receipt for that. Well, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was that some of our alumni decided, well, if we're not going to carry and do the way we used to do it, then we'll create our own. And I have not a problem with people saying, you know, we believe in Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. We want to continue to give scholarships to students. But you can't say you're then an alumni, official alumni association of the university because we own the marks and the trademarks and the seals. And the moment that you start using those things is the moment that we have to be in litigation to stop you from doing so. And that is the crux in part of our disagreement. Now, I'll grant you, I would love to see how we get this resolved. Unfortunately, because it's in litigation, we're going to have to let it play out. But rest assured, we are inviting every alumni regardless of what side of the fence you're on, to join us in trying to do it, the most important thing, the main thing is our students. Whether you like someone, you don't like a policy, you don't like something that the university is doing, that's one thing. But when you do that and it doesn't benefit the student, it doesn't really give the student the identity because every time those kinds of things happen, they compromise the credential that students are practically giving their life away, mortgaging part of it because of the debt they're going into. And you can't cheapen that degree. And every time this kind of thing happens, it hurts It hurts those young people. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to take a break and come back. I'm going to pick up on that uh, in just a moment. Uh, you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, on the Black Star Network. Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punch! It's a real um, revolutionary right now. I Thank you for being the voice of Black America. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? On a next, A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, a relationship that we have to have. We're often afraid of it and don't like to talk about it. That's right. We're talking about our relationship with money. And here's the thing. Our relationship with money oftentimes determines whether we have it or not. The truth is you cannot change what you will not acknowledge. Balancing your relationship with your pocketbook. That's next on A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, here at Black Star Network. Brandon Drake, before we went to the break, we were talking about alumni. Yes. So you're meeting with students. Yes. Uh, are you looking to do something similar across the country with alumni to bring them up to speed? Because, yeah, look, the, 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 look, the lawsuit is still going on, um, but... Uh, but surely they, they, there is some sort of path pathway for them to also uh, still be engaged. Yeah, so what yeah. is happening there? Yeah, good question. So um, I've been doing a series of fireside chats around the country, uh, and they have been, we've been, you know, well received. Our director of alumni affairs has done an outstanding job of sort of redirecting some of that energy into what we can do in the future together. And 
uh, next week, we'll be holding a national alumni um, town hall for all alumni. The only thing you have to do is prove that you're an alum. <laughs> so we're going to have a system by checking and make sure your name's available to us in our alumni roster. But if you are, you'll come in, and I will walk them through the same thing I'm talking to our students about. They'll have a chance using a QR code to actually ask their questions in advance, and then we'll have, of course, the opportunity to chat to answer more questions. It'll be moderated. But, but I want to talk to them. I want to hear what they have to say. Um, not in, a, not in a, a gripe session, of course, but in a session that really we can have some constructive conversation about what has taken place, what the future can look like. Because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that I love to focus on what the future looks like. Got to deal with the present. You can't ignore that. But the future of our university and the future of many of our students is based on how well we begin to lay the groundwork for them. And the more time we spend on individual agendas, it's hard to focus on their agenda. And their agenda is making sure they have the credentials to go out and compete in the world. So you're talking future. Um, so I'm traveling yesterday, and I see a tweet that you have a new football coach. Uh, and then all of a sudden the tweet disappears. All right, so what, 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 what the heck is going on? What's that about, do, right? do, do, you, do you have a new coach or not? Yeah, so... so we, we are really excited about um, our new candidate that's, that we are uh, about to hire. The only thing that you know, we're being careful about is that it does have to be ratified. His contract has to be ratified by the board. But barring that, we do have a new football coach, which we're really, really, really excited about. Raymond. He's a great guy. And you know, he has the Christian ethos in his blood. He's an alum. And we're really excited about him. But all of that will become more public next week and we want to hold an official press conference and we we know that you know once he sent his tweet out and then once it was on Facebook it was over so now that the cat's out of the bag now we have to say okay you know but we really do want to have a formal announcement of his coming and and give him the spotlight that a new head coach deserves. So how are you, how, how are you getting control of that to where folk understand uh, procedures, practices. Look, I get it. Uh, there's someone who uh, we've been working on a show on my network who posted on social media, and I was like, uh, did you see me post it? I didn't. Right. Uh, and so uh, that that also is a part of institutional standards, yeah. practices, and procedures. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, one of the, one of our, uh, our areas of growth is, again, recognizing we're in a digital world now. And what that simply means for us is we got to have people to monitor digital behavior, but we need practices and policies that we need to share with our employees when they come to work here, and also those who are here already, about how social media needs to be used and how it's governed by the institution. Uh, we haven't, quite frankly, haven't been aggressive in that, and uh, we're going to get a lot more granular and precise about what we ask and expect our employees and our students to do. And, and with all this of this happened, uh, has this also caused you to be even more thorough in looking at and, and raising the question, do you have the personnel needed to go to the next level? There was a CEO who once said, the people yeah. that made me a $500 million a year corporation yeah. can't take me to a billion. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the hardest things for a lot of people right. coming in saying, you know what, you're a nice person, you've been a great but actually it's time for you to go because you can't elevate the institution. Yeah. Are, are you, that's why as you're looking at buildings, yeah. are you looking at people the same yeah, way? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, we just hired a new C a CFO. We're going to be hiring a new CIO. Uh, we, we want to ensure that we're building a team of professionals who have experience, but more importantly, that they have the forward thinking capability because you're absolutely right. You know, it, it's one thing to have an idea, but if somebody can't help get you to the next level to make that idea come to reality, then it's not really a, something you should even focus on. And I, and I think that, you know, Bethune-Cookman University came through such a rough time in its history uh, a few years ago. And thankfully, there were some people who really took it to heart to try to ensure that the university got back on stable footing. Well, good news is that we are on stable footing. We do have a way forward. Now... We got to build the right team, the right people, uh, get the right things in place so that we can move forward. And I think this was a wake-up call that we need to move faster. 
Um, moving slower is not an option right now. That, uh, I saw a, a tweet uh, from several people, including Ed Reed, about one of your football players mm -hmm. uh, being uh, suspended. Yeah. Uh, first of all, is that true? And what happened? So uh, he was disciplined. Um, and the discipline really was as a result of... Is he still on scholarship? To my knowledge, I don't think he's lost his scholarship. Okay. Um, but I do believe that um, the violations were more around things he was asked not to do, and he did, and that's what the Code of Conduct says here. So, you know, we we didn't penalize him, as might have been reported, for speaking out because, <laughs> trust me, you know, I had 300 students speaking out, and you can't get rid of all them, nor would I want to, by the way. Um, I think that it was just a situation where he, it was a judgment call for him, it was a judgment call for his coaches, they made the call. And it was because you, you had a players-only meeting, and so what? Yeah. Uh, they were told not to record, and he recorded yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And he was asked not to record it. And that was because, and by the way, he was admonished by some of his, his players as well, you know, his teammates. So, you know, look, we got to have rules. Uh, we don't have enough, and sometimes we have too much. I think for that particular uh, event, you know, we were trying to ensure that it stayed in the family so we could work it through. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, you can't come and call my house nasty. And then ask me, can you spend the night? <laughs> you know, fundamentally, we needed people who, who were able to focus on what we needed to do for our football team. And the players that were there, those uh, alumni players did a, gosh, I just thank God for them. Because they were able to come in and talk to the players in a language that I can't speak, quite honestly, to them. And I'm grateful that we had a great meeting. And we're off to a great start. They're, they're working. And once, uh, once our coach is in place, and he begins to assemble the staff. He's a great recruiter. Uh, we're going to be fine. Where are you in terms of practice field on the campus? My understanding, you're spending thousands of dollars transporting players back and forth to the stadium uh, as opposed to being on campus and also uh, on campus locker room showers, things on those lines. Yeah. Status of that. Yeah, so <clears throat> we have what's called the ATC, which essentially is the athletic training center, which sits at the corner of uh, International Speedway Boulevard and uh, Lincoln Avenue. There is that building and that land bes behind that building, which is where we want to build that practice field on campus and lockers and showers. We have two adjacent buildings that have not been used that we want to convert so that that also has weight rooms and other kinds of facilities for our athletes. We're going to put up the seed capital for that. Have a What's going to cost it? There. We're thinking somewhere about $2 million. Um, but that's that's sort of a preliminary cost. We've got a lot of work to do. But we're working on the architectural drawings now. Our goal is to try to have that facility up and running by the end of the summer. But we're excited about that. That's going to be fun for our athletes. And the other thing we can do is we want to keep them have, from having to cross the street. So we want to be able to make sure that everything's all in one place. So when they do cross the street, they're actually going back to their residence hall. Um, what's the biggest thing that you have learned from this um, experience, the hiring of Ed Reed, then choosing not to retain him, and all the controversy uh, that's, that's, uh, that's ensued? I learned a lot of things. I mean, um, you know, I consider myself to be a lifelong learner, so that means, you know, I, I never think that uh, I have all the answers to all the questions, because I don't. Um, but what I do, do believe is that um, there's some things we could have handled better. I think we should have been ahead of our, our work and communicated to the campus more about what we were doing with our facilities. It could have cut down on a lot of stuff. I think that um, while hiring Ed Reed, uh, and not hiring actually, but in negotiations with him, um, you listen, you know, he was a, a fantastic player. And I think that uh, his intentions were, were good. I don't think that he wanted to harm the program or the university. Um, I think that it's just not a good fit, and sometimes you've got to get ahead of that. I wish we would have been a little bit more ahead of that. Uh, third thing is, is that um, transparency and excessive communication sometimes works better. Uh, sometimes you don't think you need to communicate when you really do need to communicate. So things like ensuring that our financials, uh, people understanding that we're not only solvent and in the black, 
but that, you know, the CARES Act funding and the money that we were given by the federal government was stewarded well. Uh, and you made that public? Yes. Sixty uh, percent of that money uh, went to students. So it's on your what, web website? It's on our All website. Right. But we got to make, you know, we've been thinking about how do we break it down so the average person can understand. Mm -hmm. And we're working on that because it's not just about putting it on our site. we got to say, okay, we just spent $66 million. Sixty percent of that went to students and to repay their debt so they could stay in school. Many of them were carrying forward debt, and we wanted to pay that off and use those funds. And the rest of it went to actually instruction, new faculty or existing faculty creating the programming that allowed our, our curriculum to expand. Um, those are things that I wish we would have done sooner. Didn't think about it. But now we know the importance of doing it. Last question. Um, there's someone out there who's saying, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to send my student, send my child to Bethune Cookman. Yeah. Or the alumni who's saying, I'm not sure I want to send my money. Yeah. Um, what do you say to that person? Both of those people. <laughs> so the first person I'd say is the parent is, <clears throat> you know, before you make the decision, talk to us. Come see our campus, spend some time with our admissions people. See if the culture here for your daughter or son makes sense for your family. Um, because, uh, you know, you got to take a look see. Um, my daughter, uh, I took her to see my alma mater when she was getting ready to go to college, one of my daughters. She looked at the camp and she said, not doing it, Dad, sorry. <laughs> I know you want me to be a legacy kid, but this is not going to be. She ended up at Sam. Um, so I want them to, to come and feel the campus for themselves, meet the people, meet this community. Uh, Daytona Beach is a welcoming community in this environment that we have, and we want them to feel like this is a place they can be. For the one that says, I don't want to send my money, or I'm not sure I should send my money, I would say, listen, I can't tell you where to send your money, but if you have an interest in investing in kids that need a future, then this is, there's no better place to invest in here. All right. Well, we'll look forward to see uh, what happens uh, over the next several months. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, d tell that story as well. Keep us honest. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. When we come back to Hope Fellowship, we'll talk with students here, get their reaction to what the president had to say, uh, and talk about the path forward for Bethune-Cookman University. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered at this live community town hall here in Daytona Beach, Florida, right here on the Black Star Network. <laughs> Black Star Network is here. Oh, no punches! I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? On a next A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, a relationship that we have to have. We're often afraid of it and don't like to talk about it. That's right. We're talking about our relationship with money. And here's the thing. Our relationship with money oftentimes determines whether we have it or not. The truth is you cannot change what you will not acknowledge. Balancing your relationship with your pocketbook. That's next on A Balanced Life with me, Dr. Jackie, here at Black Star Network. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood-Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We'll laugh together, cry together, pull ourselves together, and cheer each other on. So join me for new shows each Tuesday on Black Star Network, a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. The 54th NAACP Image Awards is airing live on February 25th, honoring outstanding performances in film, television, theater, music, and literature. But this year, Roland Martin Unfiltered is nominated for Outstanding News or Information Series or Special. To vote, head to NAACPImageAwards.net, scroll down to Outstanding News slash Information Series, select the category. You have to click on hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered Black Votes Matter Election Night Coverage. 
To submit your vote, you will need an email. Only one vote allowed per email. Voting ends on February 10th at 9 p.m. Vote today. Hi, y'all doing? It's your favorite funny girl, Amanda Seals. Hi, I'm Anthony Brown from Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. Up, Lana Well, and you are watching Roland Martin on Flick. Why are we early? They haven't even they haven't played the stinger. All right. We supposed to play the stinger coming back, but we didn't play it. Now y'all can clap. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't make me cuss in this church, Carol. Don't make me. <laughs> y'all dog, come on. I look at she over there. I, I, I got I got a best with it. I got a best with it. All right, y'all. Let me introduce uh, our students here, folks. Uh, uh, joining us right now on my uh, on the far end, Sensoria McKay. She's a member of the band, a junior here, Bethune Cookman. Dalen Sims. <laughs> Dalen Sims, former Mr. Sophomore uh, e, uh, elect, also uh, well, he a sophomore, uh, and uh, Maya Walker, Bethune Cookman, uh, a senior as well. So give it up for uh, y'all students. All right, so first of all, I need you to explain the Hail Mary uh, hashtag Ed Reed was right, hashtag buy, buy Belvin shirts. Y'all have them on here. So uh, whose idea was that? So the idea was it was a collection of students, also also alumni. Um, Hail Mary, they had a, um, a protest back in 2018, I believe so, 2017. Mm -hmm. And that was to get a new board of trustees, new president. And they saw very good push to it, so we wanted to pick it back off, the, off of their success. Also, with um, Ed was right. Ed Reed was right in the fact that we had conditions that, unlivable conditions on campus, and also that we need unique change. And Bye Bye Belvin basically means we want a whole new board of trustees, and we need a whole new period. <laughs> and we know that it starts at the top, and the top is board of trustees and Boy, Chairman Perry. So we want all of them gone. And, <laughs> and we want a new book trustees where alumni can pick it. Students, faculty, and staff can also help out and pick a book trustees that is for, but they could mean not for their own pockets. So I'm going to get to. I'm going to get to the board in a second here, uh, but I do want to uh, talk about something the president did, did say. Uh, uh, control room, pull up the, uh, the, the post that I sent y'all. Uh, and so uh, this went out yesterday uh, where uh, Coach Woody uh, actually tweeted that he was uh, coming to Bethune-Cookman. Uh, and this was the uh, tweet here. It went up on his Facebook page, then Twitter. Well, he had to take it down. Uh, because he wasn't authorized to post it. Uh, and so when the president said that uh, they'll be making the announcement next week, and so uh, either one of you, again, uh, your thoughts on the fact that uh, the university is moving forward, that Ed Reed will not be the head coach here at Bethune-Cookman. They have chosen someone else. Okay. So um, it's sad to see Ed Reed go because Coach Reed, he wanted to change for us. He saw that Bethune-Cookman needed to change. He wanted to change not for the football team, but for the whole school. So it's sad to see him go, but, you know, we have to keep moving on at the end of the day because at the end of the day, Bethune Cookman is a business, and you have to keep the business running. Um, I just want to say that with every every came in, and it wasn't like he had this selfish attitude. It was no what selfish. It wasn't that, oh, I'm just here strictly for the football team. It was really just I'm here for the school. It's time to turn things around, like, you're here to make a change. And for him to go is just, it's sad. So, like, with the new football coach coming in, it's really going to have to, you're going to have to pick back up um, off where Ed Reed left off at. And if you can't do that, then it's just on to the next person. When you, do you believe that uh, the comments made by Ed, do you believe that that, uh, gave new life to the student. It, it empowered folks to be able uh, to freely speak out about what they uh, are concerned about. I mean, th there were previous protests in, in other years, but what I kept hearing from folks uh, saying is that what, when he made those comments on social media, uh, that it really spurred others to say, you know what, I need to use my voice. Yes, um, his comments did create a spark in the protest of Hail Mary Part 2. Um, it, it needed to be said because Students have been gone long enough from being unheard by the university. 
and it was just time to make a change. So one thing about Bethune Cookman, they hate bad press. So for us to get to them is to go to the media, is to say, hey, we have mold in our dorms, is to say we, are, we have rats, we're getting sick by it, because how many times do we have to complain for you to do something and nothing is being done? Now, when you, now, 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 now when you say complain, here's what I'm, I'm curious about. Uh, who are you complaining to? What is the process? Uh, you know, is there a formal process uh, when it comes to the issue that you're talking about? We complain to maintenance. So people that stay in phase or these different dorms, they complain to maintenance, but... Right, but, but you're talking directly to maintenance. What I'm saying is, is it, a, is it the worker? Is it their boss? Is it the supervisor? Or is there an administration, administrative person who you're able to uh, communicate with who's frankly over them? It's a work form, so we don't know who we're um, talking to. It's just the form that we send in. It's to, a form you fill out Yes, it's and a form that in. we fill out and that we send. Um, like Maya said, it is a form that you fill out and you send in and depending on the severity of it is how the response time is with Mo for me personally um this being my third year me putting in a work order for Mo I probably won't see nobody in my room doing something about it until maybe three four weeks almost a whole month because it's always the issue of oh you could take bleach and spray at it and it'll come off but it grows right back or they come in and paint right over it and cover up the mess that is still there that continuously make people sick um with even with the maintenance coming to fix it um the form that's being put out is just it's not it's not enough response time like the fastness of it going out and actually having it being done and not just covering it up just to cover it up if you look at the, the various issues, I mean, there are a number of issues that folks have talked about. What would, you, would housing be, or the conditions in housing, be the dominant issue among students? I believe housing would be number one, just because of that. That's our home away from home. We're there most of the time out the year, beside our breaks. Or if we're there for the summer, we're there for the whole summer break. But that's, that's our home away from home. So if we can't live in our home, away from home, it's like. I might as well just go back home and not come back to school. And our community, we want to get our education and they want to help make sure our families, our family families are all straight. So we want to make sure we get our education and live a good life. You talked about um, uh, the mold issue taking three, uh, three four, four weeks. Um, again, that communicating to other folks as well. You said folks have uh, gotten sick. I received an email from a parent uh, who talked about uh, their child had to go to uh, the hospital because she had breathing issues uh, as a result. Uh, have you heard that from other students who have been impacted? I have heard that from other students, and I've also have dealt with it myself. Um, even though I'm not, um, I don't have asthma, I still have gotten sick from the mold because not only does the mold sit on our walls, it we shower in it, we breathe in it from the air vents. It literally sits in every crack and crevice in the dorm so i have heard and i've also experienced it also being sick just from the mold and the mildew that builds up in our rooms so you heard the president talk about um already they've already inspected 60 of the 100 buildings and they've had uh crews uh, on campus first of all have you have you seen that in the past uh, seven to ten days yes so when so before you said you was coming to coming to do um a town hall meeting Nobody was really out there cleaning. They were doing the, the, the regular cleaning. Then I say on Monday or even Friday, they got kids in high gear. They've been out every day. Clean, <laughs> they've been cleaning, going from dorm to dorm. You trying to say we made them do some cleaning? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. They've been going from dorm to dorm, seeing if everybody's okay, seeing what, can you, what do you need done, because they, know, they knew you were coming to Bethune Cutman. Well, not coming, but you was in will be in the area. You were smiling when I when I raised that question. Go ahead. Yes, because I just feel like it shouldn't take all of that. Mm -hmm. It should not take for us to complain and for us to go to the media for y'all to do what y'all supposed to do. Y'all know the school is a mess. Y'all know we got motor in our dorms. Y'all know these buildings need to be paid. Just do what you got to do, and then we'll be quiet. That's just that's just point blank. Period. I want to say that with what she just said, 
some of us, and, and I'm speaking for me personally, some of us didn't even have the option to stay in a dorm that we wanted to stay in. Um, people who have high GPAs, like 3.0s or higher, they've had to be forced into uh, the honors dorm. Um, I stay in Lee Ryan, and when I say it's been... It's been a challenge because this is supposed to be an honors dorm. We work hard for our GPAs, and we're living in filthy conditions to the point where ceilings are not being fixed. Water is coming in through our ceilings. We didn't have no choice but to stay in there. Like, there was no other option. It was strictly, you got this GPA, you got to stay in there, live with it, deal with it. That's how it felt. So, like, with Maya said, it shouldn't have to take all of that to really fix the problem, honestly. So, go ahead. Let me pay back off what my sister said. Um, I know in Lee Bryant, you guys didn't have any AC for... Since July. Since, since July? Mm -hmm. So, they haven't had any AC since, since July. Who, who hasn't had AC? Lee Ryan. It's the, it's the honors dorm building. They haven't had any AC since July. So, you said the, on, the honors building hasn't had air conditioning since July? Yeah, they have, they have an AC now. I've been in there since July because I stayed on campus for a summer program. And when I got moved into my um, um, housing assignment for the school year... I didn't have no air, and mind you, I have a service animal. So imagine living in that, being in band practice, and coming back into a hot sauna room, literally, a sauna, and it's high hopes of, we're gonna get this air conditioning fixed, we're gonna make sure we do this, we're gonna make sure you do that. You giving us high hopes, but there's no work being done. It's, it's a lot of talk, but not a lot of work coming behind it. Um. We were talking to, as we were talking about uh, that, uh, and obviously the universe was impacted uh, by the hurricanes. Uh, but you have been here, you've been here. What was it like before the hurricanes? Because, I mean, obviously, I mean, I get, look, I've, I live, I'm from Houston. I've lived through multiple hurricanes, knocking our power out uh, for two weeks uh, and having bad conditions. But did these issues predate the hurricanes that impacted this university? I say yes, because of the fact that even us coming back from the hurricane, um, there was things put out on social media, um, things that were said by staff that were, when we come back, X, Y, Z, A, B, C is going to be fixed because, you know, the effect on the hurricane. Some, um, I know in, for my door Lee Ryan, the back wing of that dorm from the third all the way to the first has been completely like affected to the point where people have had had to move out because of the damage that came from the hurricane. Other rooms, not so much, but just the fact that you say we're going to have this, um, we're going to have AC units, we're going to make sure that, you know, um, certain things are going to be taken care of before we come back because we was out for, I think, maybe two, three weeks, two, three weeks at the most. Even with that, the campus was still being, um, it was still being cleaned up, but it was still enough time for something to be changed. And coming back and there's nothing to be changed, it's just like, what was y'all doing? And to the dorm, uh, the molding dorms, it was molding dorms before the hurricanes. Mm -hmm. So, yes. in turn, President Drake, he cannot say the hurricanes caused the mold, because the hurricanes did not cause the mold. The mold was here before both hurricanes came to Florida. Even with that, we, and I keep talking about my dorm, but I'm just using for where I live at. Right, right, um, your experience, your experience. Personally, even with the, um, the no air, with the no air, we ended up begging to get some type of fan. We didn't get a fan until literally the middle of fall semester like an actual box fan. It did some, it did somewhat help, but we didn't get an actual AC unit, like a portable AC unit in our room until right before Hurricane Ian. And then when we came back, it was gone. <laughs> Literally, it was gone. And so, as you laid this out, what are your parents saying? <clears throat> Hurry up and get out of there. That's what she's telling me. Hurry up and get out of there. <laughs> You're laughing, so clearly. Oh, for my parent, it's very much 
what Maya said, it's, it's, it's time for you to go. Like, it's time to get up out of there because you shouldn't have to live in your home away from home in that type of condition. You're paying all this money out to the university. And where is the money going for our living conditions? So, yes, my, my parent, by her being a single mother, and it's frustrating to know that I'm constantly worried about my child's safety, my child's health. You can't sleep like that. You can't, as a parent, you can't sleep like that. So, like Maya said, my parent is basically like, it's, you got to find a way to get up out of there. And you're graduating when? Next spring. So you got, I got, nothing, a, whole you got a whole year. year. <laughs> so, uh, so, what, you trying to get me to come back every week so you can make sure stuff is straight? <laughs> if, if you must, please. <laughs> All right, hold tight one second. We've got to go to a break, folks. We come back, we'll continue our conversation. Uh, I do want to uh, talk about uh, the uh, conversation last night that the president had with the freshman class uh, and what their plans are communicating uh, with the various constituents uh, on the campus. Folks, you're watching a special town hall here, community town hall at Hope Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, this uh, town hall focused on Bethune Cookman. Uh, we'll be right back on Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Next on The Black Table with me, Greg Carr. An hour of living history with Dr. Richard Mariba Kelsey, thinker, builder, author, and one of the most important and impactful elders in the African-American community. He reflects on his full and rich life and shares his incomparable wisdom about our past, present, and future. I'm a genius is, is, is saying that my uncle was a genius, my brother was a genius, my neighbor was a genius. I think we ought to drill that in ourselves and move ahead rather than believing that I got it. That's next on The Black Table, here on the Black Star Network. Most people think that these television shows that, that tell stories about who we are as black men, and then they paint these monolithic portraits of us, they think that they're being painted by white people and i gotta tell you there are a whole bunch of black folk right that are that are the creators right the head writers right the directors of all of these shows and that are still painting us as monoliths the people don't really want to have this conversation no they don't Hey, I'm Arnaz J. Black TV does matter, dang it. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Jacob Lattimore, and you're now watching Roland Martin right now. Stay woke. Folks, welcome back to Hope Fellowship Church here in Daytona Beach, uh, Florida, for our Bethune Cookman Town Hall. We're talking with some students here. We got a packed house here uh, of students and uh, alumni and the community folks here. Uh, and so, everybody wave. Everybody wave. All right, glad to see everybody here. Uh, glad to see you here for this conversation. Um, we were we, we played the interview there uh, of uh, President Drake. So uh, I'm curious. So last night uh, they had uh, he said they had a meeting with. Uh, the freshman class. How many folks showed up? Had to be like less than 20. Now, just it, it, anyone just give me a number. How many freshmen are on this campus? So the, the, so the just, just give me, just, just give me a just roundabout number. Go ahead. The freshman class is the biggest class we have on campus right now. Huh? It, it, the biggest class we have on campus right now. Yeah, what? Five, six hundred, seven hundred? No, like a thousand. thousand. So a thousand. A thousand. Okay. So, so, so here's here's my problem. Here's my problem. Your folks have been protesting conditions on campus. 
complaining about a number of things. I had the student leaders on my show saying they had not met face to face with the president since August. For the first opportunity to sit and meet the president, 20 out of 1,000 show up. Yes, sir. But, but That's a problem. Yep. Because if you're talking about confronting leadership and demanding change, folk got to show up and speak their mind and challenge the administration. Because I'll tell you, if 20 out of 1,000 show up, a bunch of other folks will say, we good. I'm going to move on. What did you say to those freshmen? I would just say, you know, we did all this talk. We did all this work. The, all the media came out. The news stations come out. You still need to speak your mind. Don't be afraid to go out there and say what you need to say. Don't be afraid to say, hey, this is what's going on in my room. I got mole here. Don't be afraid to say, go out and speak your mind. Um, I would say that freshmen, even though you guys are fresh on this campus, y'all still have a voice, just like the rest of the student body. So don't ever feel like your voice is not heard. Yes, we had a protest, but a protest is not enough to do what we need to, the changes that we need to have happen on this campus. So yes, we had a protest, we did all of that, but showing up to these town hall meetings is very, very important because this is where you get a chance to see the president, you get a chance to speak what you need to speak instead of just, oh, I went to a protest, I did what I needed to do, I'm going back to my room. Because at that point, it's just like, like it was said, you know what, my job here is done. So you have a voice, use it. Don't feel like you, you're the youngest on campus that you don't have a voice and you can't use it. Use your voice. But, but also, I think it goes beyond just being able to go, to, go there and speak your piece. Um, information gathering is also important. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, uh, what my favorite phrase is, when you don't know, you don't know. Uh, and there are, there, there are a lot of folks who actually don't know. Uh, I've got questions in my pocket. I've had people emailing me and folks like, well, where is this and where is that and what's going on? Well, if you never have an opportunity, look, and I, I challenge the president. He readily admits they have not communicated enough with students and being transparent about what's going on. Um, you know, when he said that 60 percent uh, of the, uh, the funds uh, that came from, uh, the, um, uh, from the federal government uh, was used to pay, uh, to pay, pay down uh, student debt, I said, wow, first of all, that's a story they should have been telling folk. That's kind of, kind of important to actually share with folk. Other universities have done that. I know, I know at Fisk, uh, they actually gave stipends to folks that pay down their debt. Some other HBCUs did that as well. Uh, but that's information that needs to be shared. But if we're going to have, again, this, this type of conversation, and we're talking about demanding change, then leaders have to lead. And they have to tell folk, you can't sit on the sidelines and not say anything you must ask questions, make demands, but also get information so you know actually what's going on. So that was the freshman class. This week come as a sophomore class. Yes, sir. What you going to do? I'm going to be there. Front row. How many other sophomores in here? And how, and how are you also going to challenge others uh, to say, look, you need to be there to directly speak to the president and the administration? Right. So I'm like talking to my peers, say... We've been, we've, been, we've been for two years. We, ever since we got here, we've been having problems with our dorms or with, with Dexo or anything going on campus. So we have to be there. Now, when you were listening to the interview, uh, there were a lot of groans, folks like uh, uh, not happy with a number of different things uh, that uh, the president said. Uh, were any of you aware of how the American Rescue Plan funds or the COVID relief funds were actually used uh, when the president said 60% went to student debt. I did not. I didn't even know that we got um, any money from the American um, Rescue Plan because we are a private institution. No, no, no. Uh, so the reality is, um, the reality is, I, 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 this is my show. So the, about 6.5 billion dollars uh, went to a variety of HBCUs, um, and we can thank Congressman Jim Clyburn, Congressman Bobby Scott, uh, Congresswoman Alma Adams uh, for that. Uh, and the rally is Bethune Cookman out of the seven, out of the actually about, about eight or ten different uh, bills received about sixty eight million dollars, 
And so this funding, so you're talking about it, it was COVID. And so it was a number of institutions. They were public and private. So it wasn't just uh, pu public institutions. Uh, yeah, six, see, that's why you got to watch Roland Martin Unfiltered because we broke it down. Uh, and so, but, but that was, that was, again, that was just Bethune-Cookman. Uh, if I pull the numbers up, uh, in a second, Florida a and I, I, I believe, received uh, about 170 or so million dollars. And so, again, all the HBCUs combined were about $6.5 billion. Uh, and so, again, so what he said, 60% went to paying down student debt, 40% went to instruction. That's a perfect example. One, the university should have been explaining that. Uh, but, but how many of you even knew where that money went. I got well, one person back there. One person back there. So I see. I see a second person. Uh, so, so you were aware? Go. Cool. So, so, so how were you aware? Hold on one second. Let me go here. And, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna walk over here. We got it right here. We working. All right. So, so you, so you stand up. So you were aware. So what? You read it somewhere? You asked somebody? Um. I got it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> um, Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, I believe that was in 2020 or 2021. Um, they had us sign up um, to get the money, basically. So if you didn't sign up, I think they gave the students around 2000 But everyone that did sign up, they gave us 10000 to go towards our balance. It was a little bit over 10000 They gave it out to the students. Okay. Now, she knew that, uh, did you get the 10000 Yes, I did. Okay. Who else in here uh, got some of their student debt uh, lowered as a result of that funds? Raise your hand. One, that, that's it? I think it's yeah, that's, y'all, y'all gotta read the signs. Uh, go ahead. So it, it went towards the students, um, that were here before COVID hit. So a lot of them that are freshmen and sophomores, when they came into their freshman year, they weren't eligible to get it. it. So anybody that's sophomores, they didn't get it. But anybody that's like juniors and seniors, they should have got it if they signed up for it. Got it. All right. So how, so how, how many folks are here are juniors and seniors? And y'all didn't get that money? Man, y'all better read those signs. Uh, again, so, so again, so for me, what I would, imme what I would immediately ask is, uh, if that's the case, uh, would be, again, how was information communicated out? How was it actually shared? Was it actually communicated to parents and to students? She's shaking her head, said it wasn't. That's one of those things to me that I think uh, is critically important. Uh, now, uh, the university, they posted some of their financials uh, on the Bethune-Cookman website. Uh, Y'all can actually go there and check that out. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll be pulling that as well. Uh, but, but, but that, again, I think goes back to why you have to have these regular sessions with your, with, with your, with student body so people are getting the information. But people also have got to show up. Right. They got to show up. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say it's a two-way thing. Like it's not it's it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. It got to go both ways. Moving forward, um, because the president said they're going to be holding with each class, they're going to be having week weekly town halls. Um, do you anticipate again? Because people now understand that that people are going to be more willing to actually uh, engage with, the, with with this administration uh, on the critical issues that you face. If I have to go to FaZe or Lee Ryan or other of these or put flyers on the door and knock on these people's door and say, hey, you need to come to this town hall, I will because this is important. This is how you make a change within your own institution. By going to these people, by going to the president or whoever we're supposed to be talking to and saying the issues that need to be fixed. Now, it's up to them to take what we're saying in consideration to fix it. Right. Well, but also uh, putting that level of... Uh of pressure, it has it has to stay on because you can't let up. Right. I mean right. that because but that's that, that's the whole thing. Again, I, I think one of the things that people lose sight of when we talk about movements, uh, there are moments and there are movements. Uh, moments are something that happens for one day, but when you are there every single week, when you're constantly there, uh, and look, I totally understand. I know folks are saying, look, I shouldn't have to do all of this uh, because I should be focused on school. But to your point. If I'm having breathing issues, if I'm having mold issues, if I'm having issues with uh, rodents, if the shower head's not working and lock's not working, I'm telling you right now, I'm giving folk hell every single day uh, to actually get it done uh, and showing up. And so 
I certainly hope uh, that is the case. Uh, hold tight one second. We're going to go to a break, pay some more bills here, and continue our conversation uh, here at Hope Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach. And we're talking for our community forum, talking about Bethune-Cookman University. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Download our app. Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. Support our Brina Funk fan club. Send your check and money orders to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037. That's 0196. Cash app, dollar sign, RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R. Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. And of course, the book that is scaring white folks all around the country, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. Uh, get your copy at book bookstores nationwide. Download it on Audible. We'll be right back. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Next on Get Wealthy with me, Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, listen to this. Women of color are starting 90% of the businesses in this country. That's the good news. The bad news, as a rule, we're not making nearly as much as everyone else, but joining us on the next Get Wealthy episode is Betty Hines. She's a business strategist, and she's showing women how to elevate other women. I don't like to say this openly, but we're getting better at it. Women struggle with collaborating with each other. And for that reason, one of the things that I demonstrate in the uh, sessions that I have is that you can go further together if you collaborate. That's right here on Get Wealthy, only on Black Star Network. <laughs> hey, I'm Antonique Smith. What up, Lana Well, and you are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered.
right, folks, welcome back to Hope Fellowship Church, Daytona Beach, Florida, for our community forum, Bethune Cookman University. Uh, we, of course, uh, glad to have all of you who are watching. Don't forget to be watching on YouTube. Hit that like button. Some of y'all comment, y'all riding for free. Okay, it ain't like we charge you. We hit the like button. Facebook shared as well. You're watching the Black Star Network app. Do the exact same thing. Share your comments uh, as well. We certainly appreciate that uh, because it impacts the algorithm. And y'all also know how stuff uh, goes viral. Some of y'all may have seen my conversation last night with that black conservative. Um, he in witness protection today. Uh, after he done locked his Instagram account, Twitter account. They've been lighting this behind up, but. He has to come on. That's what happened when you come on my show and lie. It's never good for you. Uh, and so, again, hit that button. We certainly appreciate it. All right, folks, uh, joining us right now, a couple of uh, graduates of Bethune-Cookman, uh, Warnell Johnny Vickers, Jr., a former football player here at Bethune-Cookman. How's it going? Roderick Ziegler, uh, BCU alum. All right. I appreciate that. Now, I'll see Y'all didn't, didn't get a, a female along? Nobody want to talk? That, see, see, look at her. She like, she just shot her hand up. Okay, come on. Come on. All right, go ahead and sit down right there. All right, now you, you don't do what's right. I'm going to be like Prince kicked you off the stage. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. All right, what's your name? My name is Tundra King, a 1986 alum. 1986 alum? All right, cool. All right. So let's, let's, let's first, de first deal with this here. I asked the president this, and I don't know of any other place I've seen where you have this contentious relationship with alumni and the university. There's lawsuits that's going on. Uh, the president told me last week alumni giving dropped from 12% to 1%. Uh, that's unheard of. Uh, which is absolutely crazy. The national average is only three to four percent, and so to even be below that uh, is crazy. I, I, you know, so, how would you term what's going on? You heard what he said in terms of chapters uh, not being able to uh, properly track funds, folks looking for uh, receipts and stuff along those lines. So, um, explain to me what's going on in, in this relationship that, that with, with his alumni at university. Um, it's a very strained relationship. I've been a donor of Bethune-Cookman since I graduated. Around 1988, 87, I became a police officer. My school was very important to me, and I want to leave a legacy, so I began to give, and I've continued to give. To this day, I still allow the college, with all the woes that we face, to take money from my account every month. So when we began to uh, work with the college and we heard about the lawsuit that took place, it was devastating to me. I immediately emailed at that time our interim president, which we've gone through several since that time. It was Hiram Powell. I sent him numerous emails. I sent emails to the board saying, I understand that we went to a different model, but why didn't you notify the alumni to say, we're deciding to take a different route so that we will feel inclusive? And I'm still yet to hear from someone as to the change, why was the change beneficial? And I heard all kind of things that the previous alumni weren't giving money. That is a falsehood, if I can say so myself. Can I say lie? That's it's a, a lie. lie. It's a lie. It's not true. We've continued to give. We work hard. I'm in the Broward County chapter. Um, Jackie Shorter is our president. And we work diligently to give back to these students. So don't believe the hype students. The alumni give money. And we will continue to give. So so in the previous, so the previous association, how many chapters were there? Um, several. And I, I, I know well, I mean, well, I'm saying, 20, 30, 40 across at the country? Least, at least 20. Okay. At least. Um, it's about 10 in here now, 10 to 15. Palm Beach, Lauderdale, Miami, Orlando. They're here. Um, Roland, all of this could have been avoided had we had proper leadership and leadership that was willing to sit down and talk like mature, professional, educated black people. I said all that because, you know, the fact that we black is very hurtful when you have people from your university calling your job to have you removed because you don't agree with the conditions or certain things that are going on. Solo, you said that happened to you? 
Yes, it happened to me. I, um, I'm a professional. You met me before, Roland. I'm sorry that you don't even remember me, but <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Really? Hey, you here now, though, brother. I, I commend you and thank you for coming. Um, but, but, um, I'm like I met two or three people. No, you I'm just, met me. I'm, I'm man. messing with you. I'm messing You met I'm me before. Messing. But, but, um, yes, I used to host the Florida Blue Ballad of Bands for the Florida Classic for about 10 consecutive years. And uh, somebody from Bethune Cookman, my <coughs> alma mater, a black person, called to have me removed because I didn't agree with certain things that were going on and I, I made it known. And I don't work for Bethune Cookman, um, but I'll always be an alumnus to the day I die. And we have, we have people that are in position and in power, and it's very hurtful to see them going about what they do because as an alumnus, I'm used to people like, um, Dr. Oswald Perry Bronson. Now, I'm not saying, and I, hold on, I didn't say that. And, and, and first of all, for the folks who are watching at home who don't that, know who. That was, our, that was my president when I was here. Got it. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to be him or be just like him. I said that to say, I'm accustomed, before him was Richard V. Moore. I'm accustomed, who was the president before him. I'm accustomed to, to class, I'm accustomed to um, family atmosphere. The, one of the reasons I chose to come to Bethune Cookman because I parted a lot. I needed somebody to be able to talk to and have, be able to have hands-on experience. And when I was a student here through my matriculation, I was able to go and make meetings and sit down and talk to my college president. He was out on the yard talking to us. So when we as alumni don't see that now with the current administration and we have an interim president, the second interim president, which came, wait, yeah, our third interim president, which came after Dr. Cripe. So we've had four presidents in just about as many years. We're not accustomed to that. So now we're here in this situation and now you have the board of trustees and the school suing it's Alumni Association, the original Alumni Association, which is over 88 years old, which was founded and started by our founder. And then you tell us you're going to try to dismantle us. It ain't happening. It's, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Um, all of this could have been avoided by a simple, we, and, and, and I know for a fact, I'm not telling you what I heard, I know for a fact that the Alumni Association, which is currently called the Mary McLeod Bethune National Alumni Association, um, they requested a meeting with, at the time, Dr. Hiram Powell, who was our interim president, and, and they requested a meeting and they asked for um, Belvin Perry or a, some me members of the Board of Trustees to come to our national convention we were refused and turned down. Um, there was also a lawyer that was called in uh, so we could meet, have a um, mediation. That was refused. So all of this, it, it seems as though they they pretended like, and, and I'm listening to Dr. Drake, it's as though none of this ever happened and everything's going to be fine. And you, you started this with us, and now you're, you're making it look like we're the bad guys because we don't like how you're treating us. Alumni have been disregarded. Alumni have been disrespected, and they're trying to throw us out like trash. And it's not going to happen. Wildcat born, wildcat bred, and when I die, I'll be wildcat dead. I'm faithful to this school. I'm faithful to Dr. Bethune. The, the, uh, the president who, who uh, Rod so dearly loves is my grandfather. I'm the grandson of Dr. Bronson. And I think one of the things that's happening right now is from a historical standpoint, right, y'all? From a historical standpoint, that alumni feel kind of like burned. You know, we went through a lot with the Jackson administration, correct? Right. right. And so the Jackson administration really hurt because that was what put us into such financial straits. It, under, we had a surplus when my grandfather retired. We had a surplus when Dr. Reed left. So we had money. It was misused. Then what happened was Dr. Dr. Jackson left. We had uh, Judge Grimes come in as the interim. He led the way for a little bit. No, uh, no uh, permanent presidency. Then we had Dr. Kreit come in. And Dr. Kreit, he helped right the ship, right? It was a hard right, but he helped right the ship. Now, what hurt was that Dr. Kreit only stayed for a year and a half, 
Well, and, and in my understanding that he was run off. He was. Yeah, that a board of trustee. So it not, was, not, 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 that, ain't, that ain't what I heard. No. So that's it, what I know. It was it was two things that came out. One thing was that he's choosing to leave, and another thing was was something else. Don't don't so don't, don't, no, no, no I, I read because I read two things. I read I read. No 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 no. I said I ain't read it. Don't believe the former. He was run off. Okay. But so we have so we have Dr. Cry who comes in and writes the ship. But it was a hard write because what happened was in order to write the ship. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of good people, right? But 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 when you're facing a massive deficit, and when you, yes, you, have, to you hold, have to do that. Hold tight, once again. Got to go to break. We're gonna pick up on that. When we come back, uh, folks. When you're watching uh, this special town hall here in Daytona Beach, uh, community town hall regarding Bethune Cookman University, right here on Roland Martin on the Black Star Network. We'll be right back. Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen shock. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. Here's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. It's Kim Whitley. Yo, what's up? This your boy Ice Cube. Hey, yo, Peace World. What's going on? It's the Love King of R&B, Raheem Devon. And you're watching Roland Martin, Unfiltered. foundation in terms of uh, really how we got to this point. And, and, and the reality is this year, and that is, I mean, you're talking about a whole lot of things that, that have happened. And so uh, past this prologue, past lays in terms of, I understand the anger thing like that. But here's the question. What now? How do you move forward? Um, you, you have an interim president, uh, you, but you still have your board of trustees. Uh, as, as I listen to what you laid out, uh, it sounds to me like your fundamental problem still is with 
the ultimate leaders, which is the board of trustees. So is, is there a, is there one trustee who you can communicate, who you can, who you're communicating with, talking with, uh, who can serve as, um, as someone, uh, to help with this? I, I person, I personally, um, over the past several weeks have been in contact with a board member and they have just kind of laid out because my issue was, was I felt that this board member was kind of like dismissing what was going on. And, but he said from his perspective, from his perspective, he said that my job is to bring in money. I'm not worried about necessarily all the football, what's going on with that, because the people who I'm after aren't concerned with football. I need to show them what it means, the great Bethune-Cookman University. Well, so, well, well, but first of all, if anybody, if, let us be real clear. Uh, if anybody who is a board member makes that statement, uh, that person really should not be a board member. Because... Because, because the reality is a member of the board of trustees is responsible for the entire university. And so what's, what, what they should be communicating is that I care about the health and well-being of the entire university because the reality is when you talk about football or basketball or, or band, that's actually your most visible asset Park. that serve as a recruitment tool as well. Yes. Uh, and so, and, 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 and I've been communicating again mm -hmm. with administration folks, alumni, uh, board folks as well. And I don't know who the entity is. I don't know whether it's the United Methodist Church. I don't know who it is. But uh, that, because, I mean, look, you still, look, you, this university gets funding from the UMC every year. But there's somebody has to be the grown up of all grown ups yes. and say, listen. We don't need all of this drama because I can tell you it's a lot of media folk ain't got no problem with lots of drama. As, as what I've heard, heard described here, this might be a real housewives show uh, or love and hip hop in, in, terms, in, no, in terms of all the friction back and forth. And that doesn't move the university forward. It doesn't. We believe to, un to move the university forward, we must get rid of uh, our board chair. Belvin Perry must go. There's, there's no options. There's no getting around it. And but, but the problem you have though is that you, the board, the board has to do that. And so the question is, no, the people have to do that. And that's why we're here. Well, no, 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 no. Actually, no, 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 no. It's, but no, I'm telling you right now, this is the fundamental problem. Being a private institution, there literally is no entity that's over your board. What? And so now, now. Again, the people can have leverage and influence, right. but in terms of who actually has to make the vote, that's be the other board members, which raises, again, which raises the question, how, how are you, are, or how are you communicating even public with the other board members to say, hey, we need you to speak up and, and stand with us because it seems as if you got folks who are there who don't really want to say anything, don't want to get sideways with the chair. And look, the chair tried to come up, he tried to come after me. That wasn't wise. <laughs> he said about 500,000 views on YouTube. I'm just saying, it wasn't wise. Uh, but again, this does not do anything to improve the institution. We know it takes- The drama. It takes funding to run the university. And with everything that you've heard from the students, the, um, Parents that are outraged about what's taking place with their young people that are at the university. We know Bethune-Cookman must maintain at least about 2,400 students to stay viable financially. And so it's sad to say that we have to hit them in the pockets before we can make these changes. And I would hate to see the university do that. And so with that, we're going to keep sounding the alarm and we're going to try to continue to shine the light, which is why we're here tonight because we know that they want to remain in darkness. We've been in darkness. You silence your alumni with the lawsuit. You silence your students with an NDA. And so people have been afraid to come forward. Well, I get a good pension. I don't have to wait for Bethune-Cookman to pay me. So we want to sound the alarm for these young people to let them know that we're going to continue to shine light where there's darkness. We've asked for transparency. We ask as alumni, where's the money going? That's what our signs say out here. We ask for that information. We give money. We feel we have a 
right to see where that money is being dispersed. The students have asked, where is the money going? And it's just the math ain't mathing. And that's why we're here tonight. So you talk, so in terms of your, to your alumni, have you had a meeting with Dr. Drake? Yes, now, yes. We I, well, the, Dr. Drake had plenty what they would call, to me, control fireside chats. You would have to register before you attended the meeting. And once you attended the meeting, I think I was the only one at that time, unfortunately, that voiced some very hard concerns. His claim to fame was that they are not suing the alumni. They're suing the association or the former organization. And what I said to him, what I conveyed to him was, so the alumni, the, the association is made up of chickens? No, the association is made up of hardworking alums who give their monies to help these students and other donors that love Bethune-Cookman. So he kind of danced around all the questions. I asked him about some of the mold in the dorms, and he blames everything on the hurricanes. Everything gets blamed on hurricanes. So we have a lot of work to do at Bethune-Cookman. Go, go ahead. Roland, here's, here's what I have to say. Number one, um, we need a leader. We need a president, yes. not an interim president. We need a, a president. So, so hold on, on that point, um, there's supposed to be a search committee. Is there any alumni, is there any alumni and student participation in this national search? No. no. The national search is being conducted by the Board of Trustees. Traditionally, when we do it, and we've only had to do it a couple of times, we've had a national search. We had a company come in and do the search, and then they pick four or five finalists. Right. Alumni were allowed. You know the process. We, alumni were allowed to come and talk to them, ask them questions, and then a president was chosen. But, but since Dr. Kreider's left, we haven't had a leader. So that's one of the main issues. Another so, so the alumni has no involvement in that process? No, none whatsoever. whatsoever. I know at none. least one alumni on the search committee. A uh, Kelvin Maynard, he's on the. He, that's 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 we don't, one, at least one I know. So you said you said, that's a, you said that's a that's a graduate who's on the search committee. Yes. Has he reported back to alumni about the no. process? No. Well, well and, here's an important part. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. No, and um, and and there's been so many alumni meetings that have been going on, but in an alumni meeting, he said that we could have done a better job in reporting of what is going on as far as. The uh, search was has, the search okay. So, have they even laid out a timetable in terms of uh, the process? Uh, so, for, you know, for instance, I mean, the interim president, uh, you know, expires. You know, look, J June thirtieth. Have they said, hey, by the fall, by uh, by twenty twenty, January twenty twenty four, we want to have a permanent president in place? They sent out a letter saying that there was a search, but when was uh, that? To my knowledge, it's probably. It's been a few months ago, okay. but but to my knowledge, they didn't have a, a a date or a deadline that I remember. But um, that the other problem is we, and this is the point I wanted to make too. The other problem that we have is we have so many different factions of alumni. We not everybody agrees with the majority of the people that are in here. So they have had meetings, but they have them with people that agree with their tactics and their process. They meet with people who are patting them on the back for the bad service that they're getting. And, and I can't help but ask myself the question um, the other day, what ha what would have happened if Ed Reed had not done what he did? Or what would have happened if we wouldn't have been able to get in contact with you? This same stuff would have been going on. So we have, we have different alumni, and, and I want to say this to any alumni that's watching this, whether you agree with the administration or not, if we don't come together as alumni, students, and parents, and also faculty and staff, we're going to lose our school. We're going to lose our school because there are, me personally, this is what I believe. I'm not speaking for anybody else, but I believe um, there are factions that are uh, out to get not only Bethune-Cookman, but a lot of our HBCUs. They want to see us fail, and we're helping them fail. What we're doing actually is not helping. We, are, we actually have alumni that are in here right now, that, and, and, and I know y'all don't want to hear this, but I've been, and I've been saying this for years too, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it 100. We have alumni that are in here right now that won't join the alumni association, that won't, won't give money to the school and haven't given money to the school since they graduated. Now part of that is how they were treated while they were students. So we got students that are sitting here that are living in molded dorms. Are they going to want to give back when they graduate? They're going to graduate, get their cap and gown, and they're going to run. And you can't blame them. So we've got, 
We've got to do something, alumni, that's counterintuitive. We've got to give and continue to support the school, even Amen. though we don't like the conditions, but find a way also to get a new board of trustees and turn things around for these current students. I've got to, uh, I'm going to go to a break. Uh, I'm going to come back for our final segment here uh, at this uh, community town hall here at Hope uh, Fellowship Church in Daytona Beach. Uh, we're talking about Bethune-Cookman uh, University, one of uh, the more prominent HBCUs uh, in this country and obviously in this state. And so we'll continue this conversation uh, right here on Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Again, download our app. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms. But please download our Black Star Network app. Uh, available on uh, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. And, of course, our 24-hour uh, streaming channel has launched. We're available on Amazon News. If you have Amazon Fire, simply go to their live news grid, and you can actually watch our 24-hour channel there as well. Uh, the only black-owned, 100% black-owned uh, news information network with a 24-hour streaming channel. We'll be right back. get wealthy with me, Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach. Listen to this. Women of color are starting 90% of the businesses in this country. That's the good news. The bad news? As a rule, we're not making nearly as much as everyone else. But joining us on the next Get Wealthy episode is Betty Hines. She's a business strategist and she's showing women how to elevate other women. I don't like to say this openly, but we're getting better at it. Women struggle with collaborating with each other. And for that reason, one of the things that I demonstrate in the uh, sessions that I have is that you can go further together if you collaborate. That's right here on Get Wealthy, only on Black Star Network. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Hi, I'm Israel Houghton. Apparently, the other message I did was not fun enough. So this is fun. You are watching Roland Martin, my man, unfiltered. All right, control room, your feet is frozen, so let me know what's going on. Yes, I'm seeing Israel Houghton frozen. All right. All right, folks, welcome back to uh, Hope Fellowship, our final segment. Um, you, you mentioned, you talked about di di different groups here, and I'm going to put the question to you, which I say to the students as well. You can't have 20 or 30 or 50 freshmen showing up 
to a meeting with the president, you got a thousand. So when it comes to your alumni, you can't move. You think about the phrase as a band, one band, one sound. Um, you, you can't move in that direction if you got folks who are all, all over the place. So how are y'all trying to resolve your alumni differences moving forward? Because if you got a faction over here, they are not financially caring what everybody else can do. And so if you're moving forward and you don't have even a majority of your alumni on board, you're not going to be successful. So how, so how are you trying to fix that before you make demands of the university dealing with your alumni? And I mean, who, again, who is that person? Who is that group saying, hey, we got to set our differences aside? Well, we, we have a group that started called the Black Rose Project. Um, Mayor McLeod Bethune called all of her students Black Roses. Um, we started the Black Rose Project because during the litigation, the Alumni Association um, was limited at what they could do or say. So the Black Rose Project uh, came together to inform and educate other alumni of what was happening and what was going on. Matter of fact, they can go to the Black Rose Project right now on YouTube. Um, we have like a two-hour presentation to, to educate and inform people of what exactly was going on. We also are encouraging people to continue to raise money, but the school when it comes to the Mary McLeod Bethune National Alumni Association, they won't even uh, affiliate themselves at all even to take money from us. We there, there have been a couple of times that I know that they've tried to turn money in for the students and they say we don't want it. So the school is going to have, the administration is going to have to do their part. I believe at, that this is galvanizing the alumni. It's, it's awakening a lot of alumni who haven't been active and, and we're going to come together. But the, the school has to do their part too. Um, I think one of the ways that we can bridge that gap is to be able to engage the students. I think there is a, is a breach between alumni and our undergraduates. And to be able to come alongside of our students and say, hey, we have your backs. We understand that there's a lot of different things happening around you. And we've walked through a lot of what you have walked through. But we want to come alongside you. We want to help you. We want to be able to hear your voices, right? And we need to be able, as alumni, to come back and, and, you know, gird these young people up and walk with them through this time. And I think with that, uh, when it comes to our younger alumni who are, uh, uh, we are wanting to give, that will help now be in their memory saying, you know what, I remember when. But, but here's the deal though. If I want, here's, okay, here's the deal. If I want to give, I don't know who to give to. So if, if, if you don't have, if you don't have an established, Anthony, I need eyes. If you don't have an established conduit, who do you give to? Like, where do you, if somebody, if a, if a graduate wants to give right now. You call the, you, you, if you're a part of the alumni, well, Mary McLeod Bethune Alumni Association, you can give through that organization. But if you want to give as an individual, you can call Ms. Sherry Paramore in the Office of Institutional Advancement and you can tell them what, how much you want to give, but also where you want that money to go. Now, what happens after that? You got it. I don't know, but we can, we can still give, yes. but we have a lot of work to do, and, and I keep saying that. We got to come together as alumni so we can get this resolved. We need a new board of trustees. I think that was part of the school's um, plan was to divide and conquer. So they're well aware of the fact that when they came up with the, they say they're not DSO, they use a DSO model. And I think it was part of the plan to divide and conquer. And with that being said, then now you don't have, people just don't want to give. Although I give. I said my money was earmarked for the band and for the gospel choir. I only found out like two years later, I thought I was given all that time, the gospel choir said they had not seen one dime of the money. So although I said I wanted and I had it earmarked for a specific cause, it was not. But guess what? In spite of that, I've continued to give to the university I love that was so instrumental in making me who I am today. So I think we could, can continue to give to our local chapters or we can follow through like I do every so often to make sure my funds are going to where it's earmarked to be. Well, and, and look, the reality is there are people all around the country who, who make donations uh, to charities, and they follow up. They, they, they follow up to make sure that, they, hey, this is where I said I wanted to go, and this is where it needs to go. Uh, final comments. Go ahead. We got to come together. 
point blank, period. We are Bethune-Cookman. We carry Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune's legacy. We are her black roses. We are her beautiful black children. We do not let her legacy fall to the ground. I don't care. I don't care how much you don't like whoever at the top. It don't matter. We carry the legacy no matter what. Yeah, my final comment is, join the MMBNAA. Continue to support Bethune-Cookman because the students and our school needs it. And we need to continue this. This is, this is a good start. Thank you, Roland, for coming. Uh, shout out to Bishop Triplett for having us here. And I got to be slick, Roland, and give a shout out to Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. We don't, we don't mind youth groups. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Roland. I sent you about 400 inboxes, DMs, texts, all that. So thank you so much for allowing us to come and to be heard. Um, I'm so thankful for every face that's in the place because that means you care about the well-being of Bethune-Cookman. Find a student and pour into that student. And then that student pours into the next student so that we can keep this legacy alive. And shout out to the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority oh. and Incorporated. So, so let me, um, let me, first of all, let me thank you. Let me thank the students as well. Uh, Bishop, thank you very much as well. I, uh, uh, when the other church canceled uh, on us, they took a vote. Uh, I hit my man, Pastor Jamal Bryant. And he, he said, call Bishop, uh, and I was in Denver last Friday, uh, getting an award there. And I called him and he said, absolutely, we'll be glad to host this. And so I appreciate, uh, doing so. Let, let me say this as a final word. Um, you can be present or you can have presence. And as I listen to the students and alumni, as I've talked to folks, administration as well, uh, this is a moment when leaders are supposed to lead. I sat down with President Drake earlier. He's the interim president. But let me be perfectly clear who I'm speaking to right now. I'm speaking specifically to you, Board President Belvin Perry Jr. You are the board chair. You are supposed to lead. You are a retired judge. Your job is to bring folks together. If there was a jury that was deadlocked, you would tell them to go back and keep deliberating. You cannot be the leader of a board of trustees and have this level of dissension within this university. You cannot have students and alumni and folks saying you are the problem. If that many people are saying you are the problem, then you need to look into a mirror and ask yourself, why am I the problem? This is a moment when leaders can't just be present, but, but must have presence. You can't be scared to come in here. You can't be scared to talk to faculty and alumni. You can't be scared to talk to students and parents because these are constituents. You are not a dictator. Now, somebody told me, they said, oh, man, you're going hard on the, on the president. He's your alpha brother. Let me be real clear. That means nothing to me. This is about saving an institution. So what is needed are for folks to put egos aside, to put petty personal differences aside, and to actually say, how can we stand together to save an institution? Because it would be a shame for Dr. B Dr. McLeod Bethune and all these black folks who have had blood, sweat, and tears to keep the university open to be having these problems in 2023. So I challenge you, board president, board chair Perry, have the guts to have some presence and to lead. And don't hide, don't run, but actually take some accountability and lead. And if you can't lead, get out of the way and let somebody else lead. Those are my final comments. Uh, Y'all going to close this out with your school song. Go!
Thanks a lot. Thank you. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Background. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Stay black. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Pull up a chair. Take your seat. The Black Tape. With me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network every week. We'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Hood Martin, and I have a question for you. Ever feel as if your life is teetering and the weight and pressure of the world is consistently on your shoulders? Well, let me tell you, living a balanced life isn't easy. Join me each Tuesday on Black Star Network for a balanced life with Dr. Jackie. We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and my new show, Get Wealthy, focuses on the things that your financial advisor and bank isn't telling you, but you absolutely need to know. So watch Get Wealthy on the Black Star Network. 